the classical roadster. This apparently is what we have here in the form of the third generation version of BMW's Z4. Ah oh yes, the Z4, the model that some said wasn't quite a true BMW sports car last time out. The head of the company's Performance M division didn't think the old Mark II model was quite dynamic enough to get full M status. Some say it isn't quite a true BMW sports car this time round either, but usually for a different reason. The fact that it's shared its development with a Toyota, the new GR Supra. We might also mention the fact that it isn't even built by BMW. The Munich maker having farmed production out to Magna Steyr in Austria, who deal with production of models as diverse as the Mercedes G-Class SUV and the all-electric Jaguar I-Pace. Lots of issues then. Volume production, affordable modern era BMW Roadster models have always faced them. We've actually had three, starting with the E36 Series Z3 of 1995, which sold well enough to be replaced by the slightly larger and more mature first generation E85 Series Z4 model in 2002, which itself was replaced by this current car's predecessor, the second generation metal folding roof E89 Series Z4 design of 2009. Now in each of these cases, BMW referenced a bloodline going back to their giant killing pre-war race winner, the classic 328 Roadster. Exciting the motoring press each time into comparisons with Porsche's segment leading Boxster, from which the Munich maker sports car always emerged second best. This time though, with this G29 series model, there are grounds for believing that this Z4 could actually give us the really serious driver's experience its predecessors struggled to deliver. It's grippier, has a lower center of gravity, a considerably wider track, and because the previous model's heavy old metal folding roof has been dumped this time round, there's also the promise of perfect 50-50 weight distribution. There's still no full M version, but the range is topped off by a potent 340 horsepower M40i. Most buyers though are going to opt for the entry level 197 horsepower S-Drive 20i variant that we're trying here. Let's put this Mark III model Z4 to the test. There are two kinds of affordable road stuff. One breed typified by cars like the Lotus Elise and the Alpha 4C is really only for those who want a weekend plaything. Other class contenders though attempt the difficult task of delivering track level engagement with everyday usability. Prior to the launch of this G29 series third generation Z4, only the pricey Porsche 718 Boxster had really pulled that off in this sector. Can this BMW match the high standard set by that segment benchmark? Does it need to? The second question is as pertinent as the first. If BMW had pulled off Porsche levels of prowess here, it's debatable whether the core part of its target market for this car would even notice. Actually, quite a few of them might even object to things like more direct steering and an extra dose of oral accompaniment. You see then the Munich maker's difficulty here. This Mark III model Z4 had to be good, but perhaps not too good. Be real, hardly anyone's ever going to take this car on a track day. So why design the driving dynamics around creation of the perfect lap time? What many target buyers will want is a more rewarding driving experience on say a twisting mountain pass or perhaps more realistically, more spirited responses on the twisting back road they take home after dropping off their dry cleaning. Perhaps that's why we've got what we've got here. There's no doubt that it's the best Z4 I've tried, as BMW's efforts suggested it would be. They've lowered the center of gravity, widened the track, uh, completely redesigned the suspension, added in grippy Michelin Pilot Supersport tires and stiffened up the platform. Plus the switch away from the previous model's metal folding roof panels back to a simpler fabric top has allowed a return to near perfect 50-50 weight distribution. 
but you don't get the razor sharp steering responses of a Boxster that make you want to throw that car into a corner at every available opportunity. And there's no option on most models for the immersive feel that you only get with a slick shifting manual gearbox. Your Z4 will certainly feel like the real deal though if you've a growly six cylinder engine plumbed in up front. The chances are it won't have. The vast majority of sales will be of models featuring the twin power two litre four cylinder turbo petrol unit that we're trying here, offered with 197 horsepower with the base S Drive 20i we're testing today, or 258 horsepower in the case of the mid range S Drive 30i variant. It's a willing engine, but not an especially exciting sounding one, so you won't be looking for excuses to rev it up towards the red line. If you do, there's a top speed of 149 miles an hour and 62 miles an hour from rest is 6.6 .6 seconds away, aided by the launch control system that's integrated into the eight speed paddle shift auto gearbox that BMW clearly thinks all Z4 should have. Only the cheapest S Drive 20i gets a manual stick shift option. Switch your attention to the S Drive 30i, as many buyers will, given the lack of any efficiency downside, and the performance stats improve only slightly to 5.4 seconds and 155 miles an hour. A better reason for switching to the mid range model probably lies with the opportunity you get with this variant of specifying BMW's M Sport differential, an option not offered to buyers of the base version. This is an electronically controlled rear differential lock that works on the rear wheels powered by an electric motor and governed by the car's DSC driving stability control system. When cornering at speed, this setup allows as much as 1500 newton meters of drive torque to be redirected from a faster turning wheel to a slower turning one, helping to propel you from bend to bend. Oversteer or understeer is nipped in the bud without the need to brake, making it possible to power out of corners with remarkable verve and flattering you into thinking that you're the next Lewis Hamilton. As for the other dynamic option I'd recommend, well, as this car's driving dynamics chief Florian Dietrichs points out, you can't divide steering, differential and dampers, they all interact. So if you're a driving enthusiast, it'll hardly be ideal not to be able to factor in damping changes to this car's drive performance control driving mode system, as will be the case if you don't specify the optional adaptive M Sport suspension on a four cylinder model. Now integrating this option isn't cheap. It requires pricier M Sport trim for a start, but it does make the difference between the various drive mode settings much more noticeable as you switch between comfort, uh, eco pro and sport modes that also alter steering feel, throttle response and gear shift timings. With Adaptive M Sport suspension, you also get an extra Sport Plus mode that lowers the ride height by 10 millimeters. Both Adaptive M Suspension and the electronically controlled M Sport Differential come as standard if you opt for that six cylinder model that I referenced earlier, the three litre 340 horsepower M40i. It's not a fully fledged BMW M car, but the performance this top variant delivers isn't far off one of those. Good enough to power this Z4 around the Nürburgring Nordschleifer three seconds faster than a BMW M2 can manage. No small feat. At full chat with maximum sportiness dialed in, you get the kind of emotive wail that's sorely lacking from the four cylinder unit. And 62 miles an hour from rest is dispatched in 4.6 seconds on the way to a top speed that has to be artificially reined in at 155 miles an hour. You may have read about the third generation G29 series Z4 model sharing its development with Toyota's GR Supra Coupe, a program that's apparently had its tensions. The two cars have the same platform but differ widely beyond that and this straight six is the only engine they both share. Its oral soundtrack sounds great if you're able to get the roof down in this BMW, uh, you can retract the hood or indeed put it up again in just 10 seconds. So it's twice as quick to operate as the previous tin top. And when everything's in place, refinement at speed is just as good as it was when this car used metal panels. 
whatever engine you choose, cruising is a class-leading Z4 attribute over longer trips, helped by that sophisticated suspension setup that I mentioned earlier, a five-link rear system fashioned from lightweight aluminium that's supple over bumps, but sporty when it needs to be. Push it to its limits, throwing the car into a few familiar corners, and you'll find this BMW not uncomfortable with the prospect of being driven enthusiastically. Indeed, uh, you might even find the tail stepping out to egg you on a little if you overdo it or find yourself pushing hard on a slippery surface. That's easy to correct if it happens, though I criticised the steering earlier for lacking feel. It's quick and accurate, which in combination with the superb front-end traction means that corners can be attacked with surprising confidence which is the kind of driving experience you'd want a proper roadster to be able to deliver. Is this one fun? Well, it can be, and that's a big step forward in Z4 development, but you'll probably enjoy it most when you're being less dynamically demanding, which means that though everything's changed here, when it comes right down to it, much has also stayed the same. And as I said earlier, that's just the way an awful lot of potential buyers will want it. Brand loyalists will immediately recognize this as a BMW Z car. And it's not just down to the classic long bonnet, short roof format and the famous kidney badge on the grille. There are references here not only to previous Z4s, but also to the classic Z8 E52 series model of 2000 that collectors are now clamoring for. It's a shape certainly more arresting in reality than on the printed page, but one that you can't help feeling has been developed around its shared platform rather than with free-flowing stylistic expression. A potential rival, the Arbath 124 Spider, has the same issues, and this BMW, like that model, must share its underpinnings with a Japanese sports car, potentially unfamiliar to usual buyers of the brand. Not that a Z4 buyer needs to be unduly concerned that this G29 series model has the same chassis and much of the same engineering you'll find in a Toyota GR Supra. The end result here is very different, not only because this is a roadster rather than a coupe, but also because that Toyota isn't being offered with the four-cylinder power plant that most BMW buyers will choose. This Z4 makes a very different frontward statement too, with its powerfully sculpted front apron, large corner intakes and swept back LED headlights. Arrow shaped contour lines flow down the elongated bonnet into the low wide three dimensional grille which features track inspired honeycomb mesh detailing. Whatever you think of the end result, it'll certainly make a powerful overtaking statement. We should talk about the fabric roof since that's a major change over the previous G89 series Z4 with its metal folding top. It folds or erects in just 10 seconds. The previous model's rather awkward display of metallic origami took almost twice as long to complete and can be operated when traveling at speeds of up to 31 miles an hour. If you specified the comfort access option, you can operate the thing from the key fob and for a small extra cost, there's the option of having the hood finished in anthracite silver, a kind of gray finish with silver fleck that looks a bit like denim. This car's 85 millimeters longer than its predecessor, an increase necessary to meet recent pedestrian impact legislation, and a change that also then required further increases in track and overall width to keep the shape in proportion. The result is a car that's a small but potentially significant amount bigger than its direct rivals. Uh, 147 millimeters longer and 32 millimeters wider than an Audi TT Roadster and 191 millimeters longer and 54 millimeters wider than a Mercedes SLC. As for a Mazda MX-5, well that looks quite tiny in comparison. The larger wheels, which are either 18 or 19 inches in size, further emphasize this, as do the contoured flanks, the key feature lines flowing from the large air breather slits positioned behind each front wheel arch. The top crease starts along the shut line of the clamshell style bonnet, then flows back above the door handle into the tail lights. 
A second character line flows from the base of the air breather, then flows up towards the mid part of the rear wheel arch. The rear is also styled to make this car feel a size bigger. There's actually 74 millimeters of extra body width, but the horizontal lines of the integrated boot spoiler and the L-shaped LED tail lamps make it seem like more. This curved bumper line flows into boomerang shaped corner creases and the potent twin chrome tailpipes are neatly integrated into this smart lower diffuser. As usual, what's more important is the stuff you can't see, namely the steel and aluminium CL AR cluster architecture platform borrowed from BMW's 5 Series, which apparently is 50 kilograms lighter than the previous generation model steel chassis. Time to take a seat inside. With the right option box ticked, it's actually possible to unlock the long door with your phone, provided you've got a near field communication enabled Samsung handset. But I can't really see the advantage of having this over ordinary comfort access keyless entry, unless you believe BMW's assertion that phone access is harder to hack. And at the wheel, well, the exterior looks of this car may divide opinion, but there's very little not to like about the cabin. It's quite simply the nicest and classiest interior you'll find in any small roadster on sale. If anything, it's almost too sophisticated for what's supposed to be a back-to-basic sports car, with most of the fixtures and fittings lifted from BMW's luxury saloons. Indeed, you could switch into a Z4 from, say, a 3-series saloon and initially notice very little difference. Some may not necessarily think that to be a particularly good thing, but target buyers commuting to gastro pubs and wine bars will be delighted with all of it. The previous G89 series Z4 left you feeling like you were sitting over the rear axle, so vast was the long bonnet that stretched out in front of you. In this car, by comparison, you feel like you've been positioned much closer to the centre of the action, though the smart standard M Sport seats are set a little higher than I'd ideally like. Like older classic Z car models, the dashboard's angled purposefully towards the driver. Unlike those models though, you don't feel hemmed in by it. On the contrary, it's impressively roomy in here. In fact, I reckon there's probably as much space for my shoulders and elbows as I'd get in a Mercedes-AMG GT Roadster costing three times as much. And as you'd expect, everything's beautifully finished, from the contrast stitching on the standard Vanaska leather upholstery to the intricately fashioned speaker vents, the electroplated detailing, and the piano black trimming that covers the center console and the vents. The main thing you'll notice though, is a level of media screen technology that sets a fresh class standard. In an Audi TT Roadster, you do without a center dash screen. In a Porsche 718 Boxster, you do without fully digital instruments. In a Z4 though, you get both, courtesy of the brand's latest live cockpit professional package. That combines uh, this 10.25 inch digital instrument cluster display with a center dash infotainment monitor of the same size. All of it accessible via touchscreen and voice control that uses the brand's latest Hey BMW sound activation system. Plus there's the usual lower iDrive rotary controller. The latter feature will be particularly welcomed by former Boxster buyers fed up with having to stab away at a touchscreen. As for the screen technology, well, it looks very smart, though I have a couple of small reservations about the instrument binnacle display, which isn't quite as configurable as the rival Audi virtual cockpit setup, and uses opposite swinging needles that make the dials slightly more difficult than analog gauges to read at a glance. The center dash infotainment monitor, though, for me, sets a fresh segment standard in class, clarity, and ease of use. A sidebar menu on the screen gives you media, communication, navigation, car and apps selections that are also duplicated by buttons next to the iDrive controller. These shortcut options connect you into features like the standard 10 speaker DAB audio system, 4G LTE connectivity, connected sat nav and a hard drive based multimedia system, all of it standard fare 
Plus, the system can remotely update its own software too. Disappointingly though, you only get Apple CarPlay smartphone mirroring as standard for the first year and Android Auto functionality isn't offered at all. In compensation, BMW provides a range of high-tech connected drive media features that all sound impressive, but which on close inspection of the small print usually turn out to be limited in terms of their availability as a free application. There's a concierge service that connects you through to an operator to help with journeying info and a wide range of BMW vehicle apps that give you access to things like news reports and weather forecasts. There's also a connected teaser package that gives you three months use of online connected music, that's for music downloads, and Microsoft Office 365, which syncs in your emails and your calendar. And you get what BMW calls an open mobility cloud that via a clever BMW Connected Plus app can allow you to interact with the car. For instance, allowing you to remotely view it in 3D. Aside from those few small issues surrounding connectivity, there's precious little not to like. BMW seems to have a better handle than most makers on which functions are needed on the dash and which can live within on-screen menus. And lovely angled stitching decorates the SensorTech dashboard, the lip of the instrument binnacle and the doors. Beautiful ambient lighting is standard fit. Unfortunately, this neatly integrated wind deflector, which sits flush between the fixed rollover bars, isn't. The brand's standard M Sport seats with their integral headrests are very supportive, provided you pay extra to equip them with lumbar adjustment. And they now sit on rails that provide 23 millimeters more fore and aft adjustment than before. That's one little touch that makes a lot of difference, and there are plenty of others like the way that temperature readouts are shown on small screens on the climate control panel rather than hidden away in monitor menus. Plus the optional head-up display, uh, the first to have been made available in the Roadster segment, projects in large-scale 3D and shows more information than systems of this sort usually do. For some reason though, its provision feels a touch incongruous in what's supposed to be a driver orientated flies in your teeth style open sports car. But this is a different, more everyday usable kind of roadster, something that BMW's designers say they also tried to emphasize when it came to cabin storage. That's only partly true. Uh, the brand provides this narrow netted uh, ledge behind the seats and if occupants were to be short-legged and didn't mind squashing their designer shopping bags, it would no doubt be possible to cram one or two of them behind the two chairs. The glove box is decently sized and you get this smart lidded compartment at the base of the center stack that provides uh, space for an optional wireless charging mat and incorporates a 12 volt port and a usb port another usb port can be found in this box between the seats which it turns out is where you've got to look to find the cup holders that's not ideal not only do these take up most of this stowage area's space, but it also means that uh, after your pit stop at Costa or Starbucks, you've to drive with this stowage area's twin lids hanging open. BMW has also forgotten to include an overhead sunglasses compartment and a ticket clip on the sun visor. Plus, the door pockets are so restricted in size as to be almost useless. You do get a stringed compartment in the passenger footwell though. I'm less minded to be so critical about the problems with all-round vision. It's difficult to see where the extremities of the bonnet are and when the roof is up, your rear three-quarter vision is awful. Uh, these are issues that tend to affect almost all roadsters and they're mitigated to some extent here by BMW's decision to provide standard front and rear parking sensors. A rear view camera is optional. Enough. Let's finish with a look at boot space. Now that was a major failing with the previous model, inevitably so given that somewhere had to be found to house its fiendishly complicated metal folding roof panels. The return to the more conventional fabric top of the first generation Z4 obviously helps things enormously. 
whereas the previous car had just 180 litres of luggage space when the roof was down. This one can offer you 281 litres in the same configuration. That's about the same as you get in a rival Audi TT Roadster. A Porsche 718 Boxster also gives you much the same, but there the room available has to be awkwardly split between front and rear boots. Trunk space doesn't increase when the roof is raised, by the way. You have to lump your stuff over quite a high lip, but once you get items inside, there's a deceptively large amount of usable room available, enough for up to five carry-on suitcases, in fact. There's no underfloor space, but there's a useful netted storage area on the left for tie-down points and two bag hooks. The jack equipment is concealed in this right-hand storage box. If you think you might occasionally need to take longer items, it's worth ticking the box for this optional ski hatch, which allows you to poke them through into the passenger compartment. The phrase affordable roadster is a relative one in this case, given that even this least expensive S-Drive 20i variant with 197 horsepower was priced from launch at around 37,000 pounds. That's with the paddle shift eight speed auto gearbox that most Z4s have to have. For this base version, there's also the option of manual transmission. If you want to save a fraction and involve yourself in the driving experience a touch more. Now I've mentioned elsewhere in this film that this car shares much of its engineering with a coupe, the Toyota GR Supra. But sadly, in case you're wondering, there are apparently no plans for the kind of coupe body style that we saw with the first generation Z4. That hard topped E86 series model is now recognized as something of a modern classic. Around 70% of Z4 buyers are expected to go for this S-Drive 20i derivative, with the remainder of sales split between the two more powerful auto-only models that make up the rest of the range. Another £3,700 is necessary if you want to get the mid-range S-Drive 30i variant, which features the base variant's four-cylinder engine in an uprated 258 horsepower state of tune. Now, whichever version of this power plant is chosen, BMW thinks that over 80% of buyers will want to pay the £1,750 premium necessary to get more dynamic M Sport trim. The only other Z4 option is the car that offers six-cylinder power in this market segment, the top M40i variant. Here you get a sonorous 3-litre straight six with 340 horsepower as part of a single spec that from launch was priced from around £49,000. On to rivals. Now let's start with those that compete directly with this S-Drive 20i variant. The most obvious competitor to what's on offer here is Audi's TT Roadster in base 40 TFSI 194 horsepower guise, which at first glance looks quite a lot cheaper, costing from around £33,500, around £3,500 less than this directly comparable Z4 S-Drive 20i. BMW, though, thinks that much of that difference would be eradicated if you equipped the Audi to match a Z4's level of spec. Perhaps we'd be less inclined to consider the other direct option, the Mercedes SLC 200, which offers 184 horsepower and in this form costs from around £2,000 less than a Z4 S-Drive 20i. You might like the Merc if you retain an affection for the kind of metal folding roof that the Z4 has now rejected, Otherwise, though, the SLC is a rather aging design and in comparison to this BMW, much less practical and somewhat unrewarding to drive. If you don't mind going for a slightly smaller, less premium feeling Roadster, you might also want to consider the Mazda MX-5, which in two litre form delivers 181 horsepower and very similar performance to this BMW for up to around 12,000 pound less. Or if you want something similar to the MX-5, but a bit nicer, there's the car that shares its platform, the Abarth 124 Spider, which offers 170 horsepower and in auto form will save you around 5,000 pounds over a Z4. But of course, both the Mazda and the Abarth have a significantly less classy feel than what's on offer here. If you're potentially up for spending a tad over £40,000 for the mid-range 258 horsepower S-Drive 30i version of this BMW, again the most direct rival is an Audi TT Roadster, this time in 242 horsepower, 45 TFSI form. 
Again, the Ingolf that car has a significant price advantage. But again, you'd eradicate much of that through matching spec to spec. The equivalent Mercedes SLC 300 with 245 horsepower is pretty much identically priced against an S-Drive 30i. But the same comments we made earlier apply again. A Porsche 718 Boxster with 296 horsepower costs around £5,000 more and goes only fractionally faster. Finally, there's the top 340 horsepower straight six M40i version of this Z4, which, as I suggested earlier, requires a 50,000 pound budget. Here, the most direct rival is the Mercedes AMG SLC 43 with 390 horsepower, which costs almost the same, performs very similarly in a straight line, and also offers six cylinder power. Other segment rivals are more difficult to match against an M40i. Audi's options fall either side of the top version of this BMW. The Audi TTS Roadster uses a 302 horsepower, four cylinder, two litre engine and would save you nearly £3,000 to compensate for its 38 horsepower shortfall in power. The Audi TT RS Roadster uses a 394 horsepower, five cylinder turbo engine, which makes it about half a second quicker to 62 miles an hour, but that Ingolstadt contender costs around six and a half thousand pounds more. A four cylinder, 345 horsepower Porsche 718 Boxster S performs almost identically to an M40i, but costs around six thousand pounds more. What else? Well, various Lotus Elise models are offered in the 35 to 50,000 pound price bracket, but none of them can claim uh, the kind of year round only car capability that this BMW can deliver. Otherwise, the only other options we haven't mentioned are those that an M40i buyer might consider. A Jaguar F-Type P300 convertible might conceivably tempt a Z4 buyer, but it only has four cylinders and 300 horsepower and costs around £7,000 more. An Alfa Romeo 4C Spider makes even less sense. It has four cylinders, only 240 horsepower and costs around £60,000, so around £11,000 more. If you're wondering why we haven't referenced the car that shares its engine and much of its engineering with an M40i, the Toyota GR Supra, well, that's because the Supra is a coupe, not a roadster. For reference though, that Toyota costs around three and a half thousand pounds more than an M40i. Enough. Let's assume you've heard and seen enough and you're sufficiently convinced by the Z4 proposition to want to know just how generous BMW has been with the standard spec. Will you have to spend a fortune more on extras to get the car of your dreams, as is the case with a Porsche 718 Boxster? Let's see. Starting with the features that you can expect if you choose Sport spec, either with this S-Drive 20i or the S-Drive 30i. Well, we've talked about the eight-speed auto gearbox. It includes paddle shifters and incorporated launch control. Plus, of course, all Z4s get a powered soft top and a package of camera-driven safety kit that's missing on that rival Boxster. We'll get to that later. Plus, there's variable sports steering and an electronic differential lock. Uh, plus, as with every BMW, there are the usual drive performance control driving modes. In this case, Eco Pro, Comfort and Sport. Uh, these allow you to fine tune throttle, steering and on the auto variants, gear change responses. That's not to be confused with performance control, uh, which is a standard torque vectoring system that distributes engine and braking control to individual wheels for extra traction through the corners. Beyond all that, the Z4 kit list is pretty reasonable for the money being asked. Annoyingly, the almost essential wind deflector that you'll need for composed top-down motoring in this BMW cost £170 extra, which seems a bit mean. But a glance elsewhere around the standard kit list reveals that there's not much else to grouse about. All sport variants get these 18-inch light alloy V-spoke wheels, plus LED headlights, LED rear lamps, power folding mirrors, all-round park distance control parking sensors, and an alarm immobiliser. Inside, there's heated M-Sport seats, a sport multifunction leather steering wheel, an anti-dazzle rear view mirror, uh, ambient lighting, cruise control, and two-zone automatic air conditioning. 
uh, Vanaska leather upholstery is standard too. You can choose to have it not only in black as here, but also in cognac, ivory white, or even bright magma red. And all the shades feature contrast stitching. And there's a fresh level of technology and connectivity too, thanks to BMW's latest live cockpit professional package, which gives you a 10.25 inch digital instrument cluster screen, plus a 10.25 inch center dash infotainment monitor, which can be accessed via touchscreen, an iDrive touch controller or voice control. Through both screens, you can access the standard BMW Advanced 10 speaker, 205 watt hi-fi loudspeaker DAB audio system, and the connected navigation setup, which can make proactive route suggestions as you drive. Plus, there's the latest 4G LTE connectivity, a hard drive based multimedia system, and Bluetooth phone pairing too, which reminds us that BMW also these days includes Apple CarPlay smartphone mirroring on its mainstream models. Though annoyingly, it's only free for the first year. Access to the Android Auto system is still missing. As brand loyalists would expect, this modern era Z4 model includes plenty of the brand's really clever digital connectivity features too, including the full suite of BMW connected drive services. Things like teleservices, which can decide when a garage visit is required and automatically book it. And real-time traffic information, which warns you of congestion along your chosen route. Plus, there's the company's suite of BMW vehicle apps that give you access to things like news reports, weather forecasts for up to four days ahead, and information on highway tolls. In addition, the system can remotely update itself with fresh features and mapping upgrades. And, of course, it will read out text messages to you. A standard, this BMW also has a concierge service that, at a press of a button, will give you direct access to an operator who will be able to answer almost any question about your journey as you drive. It's free to use for the first three years of ownership. Talking of that kind of functionality, I should tell you about another standard feature that comes included as part of this car's live cockpit professional package. The BMW Intelligent Personal Assistant. Now this, I'm told, is an intelligent digital character who rides with you, learns your routines and habits, and is able to respond to the voice command, hey BMW. So for instance, you might say, hey BMW, take me home, because the system will have memorized your usual route. Or it might just help you with operative functions. Hey BMW, I'm cold will prompt the intelligent personal assistant to adjust the ventilation temperature. Or you might issue commands like, hey BMW, is the oil level okay? Hey BMW, what messages do I have? Or, hey BMW, look for the nearest fuel station on our route. BMW's recently been busy expanding its range of connected navigation digital services too. I liked the parking space assistant, which once it knows your destination, proposes various parking options to you in good time before you reach journey's end. It works with an on-street parking information feature that briefs you on whether there's a decent chance of finding a parking spot close to your destination. As for more usual digital features that you might already be familiar with if you've owned a BMW before, well, there's the standard remote services package that allows you to control many aspects of your car's operation via your smartphone. And you'll maybe also recognize the downloadable BMW Connected Plus app, which auto learns frequent journeys and will list them when you're most likely to drive them. Anyway, all of the things that I've covered so far come included with this car if you opt for entry-level sport trim. As mentioned earlier though, most Z4 buyers are going to be paying extra for more dynamic M Sport trim. That gets you a sharper look, courtesy of an M Aerodynamics body styling kit, high gloss shadow line exterior trim, and smarter M double spoke bicolor ferric grey styling for the 18 inch wheels. Plus, firmer M Sport suspension, an M leather steering wheel, aluminium tetragon cabin trim, and on the S Drive 30 variant, uh, an upgraded M Sport braking system. 
As you'd hope, you'll get a few additional things if you find the substantial extra fee necessary to progress to the top M40i petrol model. Visually, that variant's distinguished by larger 19-inch M light alloy double-spoke wheels finished in bicolour cerium grey. Plus, M40i buyers get a standard adaptive M suspension and an electronically controlled M Sport differential that shunts power to whichever rear wheel has the most grip during fast cornering. In addition, as you'd expect, the M40i gets most of the M Sport pack features that I just mentioned. The M Aerodynamics body kit, the Shadow Lion exterior trim, the M leather steering wheel, the aluminium Tetragon cabin trim, and the upgraded M Sport braking system. On to options, and we'll start as usual with the things that are most essential for you to consider. I'd say that on a four-cylinder model, adaptive M suspension is probably the first thing that I'd want to have. Unfortunately, it only comes as part of an optional M Sport Plus package, which is only available to M Sport buyers, and which also includes jet black colored 19-inch wheels, M stripes on the seat belts, and further extended shadow line exterior trim. Another essential lies with the Comfort package, which gives you the wind deflector that I mentioned earlier, uh, steering wheel heating, a through loading system ski hatch so that you can poke through longer items like skis from the boot, and comfort access keyless entry, which also enables you to operate the roof using the key fob. If you've an NFC enabled Samsung phone, you'll even be able to lock or unlock the car with your handset. As a Z4 owner, I think you're really going to want all of that. Uh, this particular car's got the much pricier Comfort Plus package, which includes all of this, plus front seat lumbar support and powered seat adjustment with memory settings. Now, the other thing I might struggle to do without on this car is the parking assistant option. This gives you a rear view camera, a lateral parking aid, and BMW's clever reversing assistant, which remembers the steering movements made during the vehicle's last forward maneuver and replicates the wind moving backwards. So for example, it takes over when you're reversing out of a parking position you drove into the previous night, or controls the car if you have to reverse backwards for up to 50 yards. It's really clever. The parking assistant can be ordered as a separate option for an extra 500 pounds, or it comes included as part of the technology package that's been fitted to this test car, which also includes a head-up display, a wireless charging mat, and an enhanced 12-speaker, 464-watt Harman Kardon Hi-Fi audio system. Avoid base sport trim, and as part of this pack, you'll also get Wi-Fi hotspot preparation too. With this particular car, we've also got the optional visibility package, which updates the LED headlights to BMW Icon Adaptive status. That enabling the beams to adapt to traffic and road conditions and to dip themselves automatically at night to avoid dazzling other vehicles. Okay, so that's covered all the really essential optional stuff. What else might you want to look at? Well, earlier I mentioned lumbar support and the through loading ski hatch. If you don't want to pay for the requisite pricey pack, you'll be pleased to know that you can order these features separately. Bear in mind that unless you order your Z4 in the only solid paint shade available, that's Alpine White, you'll have to budget extra for your choice of metallic colour. Uh, we've got Mineral White here. The most exclusive shade, Frozen Grey, costs three times as much as the others and is only available to S-Drive 30i and M40i buyers. If you haven't opted for the M Sport Plus package mentioned earlier, uh, you might also opt to complement your chosen shade with an optional black package, which gives you the jet black coloured 19 inch wheels and the further extended shadow line exterior trim, along with black mirror caps. You might additionally be interested to know that you can change the colour of the hood at minimal extra cost if you don't want the standard black fabric. The flecked anthracite silver hood actually looks rather smart. Uh, there are also various 19 inch wheel options too. What else? Uh, enhanced Bluetooth with wireless charging costs extra. And it would also be wise to specify BMW's Trackstar vehicle tracking system in case of theft. 
you'll need to decide whether to continue with this car's incorporated connected teaser package, which is only free for the first three months of ownership. This builds in Microsoft Exchange 365 to your car so that you can control your inbox and sync your calendar. And includes BMW's connected music package. Uh, when you open an account with this, you get unlimited music access with either of BMW's music partners, Deezer and Napster. Then you can listen to all your favorite songs or download them onto the infotainment setup's incorporated hard disk. Okay, enough with standard kit and options. Let's go on to consider safety provision. This G29 generation Z4 model has had to meet more stringent safety testing than its predecessor. And the result of that is that it's gained the key parts of BMW's latest camera-driven safety technology. The main elements grouped within the brand's Active Guard intelligent safety package. As you might expect, the key element here is autonomous braking, or as the Munich maker calls it, front collision warning and pedestrian warning with city braking function. This combined package works as these kinds of setups usually do. At over 30 miles an hour, the vehicle scans the road ahead for potential accident hazards, and if one is detected, you'll be warned, and the brakes preconditioned for maximum effectiveness. Should you be traveling at under 30 miles an hour, and be not responding to a detected hazard, the brakes will automatically be applied, reducing the severity of any resulting accident and hopefully alleviating it altogether. Another standard active guard feature is lane departure warning with steering impulse, which alerts you if you cross lane delineating lines and applies steering intervention to ease you back to where you ought to be. Plus, there's a useful speed limit assist feature which pictures speed signs as you pass, displaying them on the dash. If the standard speed limit has been set, it will then automatically adapt itself to the new limit. Use this and, well, in theory, uh, you might never get zapped by a speed camera ever again. What else? Well, as you'd expect, there's the usual electronic assistance for traction and stability control, primarily DSC plus stability control and DTC traction control. There's plenty of braking peace of mind too, with the ABS system supplemented by fading compensation, CVC cornering brake control, and a neat brake drying system that keeps the brake discs free from moisture in wet weather. Panic stops are aided by a brake assist system and advertised to following motorists by dynamic brake lights that flash a bright warning. You also get a multi-collision braking function that in the event of an impact will keep brake pressure applied until you come to a complete stop. Tire pressure monitoring is standard too. We'll also highlight the standard BMW emergency call with teleservices system, which in an accident can automatically alert the emergency services. This system not only gives them your exact GPS location, but also provides recovery personnel with information on your speed at point of impact, how hard the seat belts were pulled, how many airbags burst, and so on. If you were to have a crash, it would all mean not only that the emergency services would know exactly where you were, but also that they would arrive on the scene more prepared and ready to get you to safety than they could ever be otherwise. A potentially life-saving difference. In recent times, the setup's been further improved to also automatically activate after low speed collisions below the threshold for airbag deployment. Uh, immediately after the impact, flashing up an iDrive screen message offering to contact BMW's accident assistance service directly. If you want more in terms of camera-driven safety tech, you're going to have to stump up for the extra cost driving assistant package, which includes active cruise control that regulates your distance to the car in front and can, if necessary, even slow you right down to a stop and then start you off again. That's one of the extra camera-driven features included within the pack. As for the others, well, lane change warning warns you if you're about to dangerously pull out if there's a vehicle in your blind spot. Uh, the other three features all build on the autonomous braking capability I referenced earlier. Approach control warning and the prevention of rear collision feature both anticipate sharp braking from the vehicle in front. If that happens, you'll be warned with an optical and then an acoustic signal. 
If you don't respond, this BMW will react and brake for you automatically. I also like the crossing traffic warning feature which alerts you to oncoming vehicles if you're trying to edge out of a junction and can't completely see traffic coming at you from either side. Was any roadster ever as safety conscious as this? I rather doubt it. One of the key reasons that BMW switched from metal folding panels to a fabric top with this third generation Z4 was to make it lighter, so more affordable to run. On top of that, this G29 series model has switched to the steel and aluminium CLAR cluster architecture platform used by BMW's 5 series, a change which apparently saves a further 50 kilograms. All of which you might hope would bring this car somewhere close to the feather-like curb weight of a rival Audi TT Roadster, which tips the scales at well under 1.3 tonnes. Not a bit of it. Even the four-cylinder version of this BMW is nearly a tonne and a half in weight, only 20 kilograms lighter than its predecessor. And the six-cylinder M40i is actually heavier than the directly comparable Z4 S-Drive 35 IS version of the previous G89 series model. Should you care about any of this? Apart from being mildly concerned about the effect that the extra bulk is likely to have on cornering agility? Perhaps not. After all, you don't buy a Roadster with efficient running costs as your top priority. Having said that, if it's the kind of car you're going to be able to use every day, and this Z4 very much is, then it'd be nice if it were to be affordable to run. Actually, as the figures I'm about to give show, this car doesn't do too badly in this regard. BMW's fuel economy readings have been measured according to the latest stricter WLTP or World Harmonized Light Vehicle Test Procedure rating cycle, but the emission stats the company quotes have been converted back to the older new European driving cycle NEDC2 spec since that's what a lot of rival models are still using. Let's get to the stats. Regardless of your choice between four-cylinder auto models, either this S-Drive 20i or the S-Drive 30i, you're looking at up to 38.7 miles to the gallon uh, on the combined cycle and up to 138 grams per kilometre of CO2. These very creditable readings actually compare extremely well to that rival Audi TT, though the fairly small plastic fuel tank's relatively small size, 52 litres, rather disguises the fact. In theory, a touring range of up to around 500 miles is possible. The six-cylinder M40i manages up to 33.2 miles to the gallon and up to 165 grams per kilometre of CO2. To give you some segment perspective, that makes it about 10% cleaner than a rival Porsche 718 Boxster, thanks to a system of emission control that comprises an enlarged close coupled catalytic converter and a gasoline particulate filter enabling this straight six to easily meet the strict Euro 6D temp emission standard. Across the range various efficient dynamics technologies are used to keep running costs in check. Uh, there's an engine auto start stop system as you would expect and at highway speeds, the cruise control can seamlessly decouple the engine from the transmission to reduce friction and consequently save fuel. Of course, the driver will also need to do his or her part. The figures that I've just quoted assume that the car is being run in the drive performance control system's most frugal Eco Pro mode. In this setting, the air conditioning and power steering only work when required to save energy. Optimised aerodynamics obviously make a significant difference to economy too. BMW has developed what it calls air breathers and air curtains. These devices respectively located behind and ahead of the front wheel arches. Their purpose being to reduce turbulence and therefore drag in the area around the front wheels. You'll want to keep an eye on how frugal your recent mileage has been. A journey data part of the Centre Dash Infotainment screen's driving information section shows a useful fuel graph to brief you on that. The same screen also gives you average fuel consumption and the time the car has spent with its engine start-stop mode activated. The driving information section also has an energy flow graphic showing you at any time what's being powered by what, 
which seems a bit superfluous on a non-electrified car. And the section also includes a driving style analysis screen that when the Eco Pro mode is activated, rates your driving with marks out of five for anticipation and acceleration and works out the extra mileage range that any more frugal driving has gained you. What else might you need to know? Well, since buyers of the S-Drive 30i and M40i models will be paying over £40,000, they'll have to stump up £450 in road tax for each of the first five years of ownership. For this S-Drive 20i variant, the annual VED figure will be £140. Benefit in kind taxation is rated at 31% for the two four-cylinder models and 37% for the top M40i. Insurance groups start at 30 for the S-Drive 20i Sport or 31 for the same car with M Sport trim. For the S-Drive 30i it's 33 for a Sport model or 34 for an M Sport variant. For the M40i it's group 37. Residuals should be strong with industry experts predicting that four cylinder models will retain around half of their original value over the usual three year ownership period. For the six-cylinder M40i, that figure is likely to fall to around 47%. Adding in key options packs like the M Sport Plus package will add to your car's desirability at resale time. Routine maintenance is dictated by condition-based servicing that monitors oil level and engine wear, taking into account how long it's been and how far the car has traveled since its previous garage visit. You can check all of this using menus in the iDrive center dash display. The center dash screen's car section tells you engine oil level and service requirements. And via the screen, you can check things like your brake fluid level and the remaining mileage until the car's next vehicle check or vehicle inspection. The car will give you four weeks notice of when a checkup is needed, so you'll have plenty of time to book it. To help plan ahead for the cost of regular work, at point of purchase you'll be offered a BMW service inclusive package that lasts for three years and 36,000 miles. With this, after a one-off payment, you'll have the peace of mind of knowing that all normal work on the car has been paid for during this period, including items such as oil, spark plugs and filters. There's a three-year unlimited mileage warranty, much as you get with a rival Porsche 718 Boxster or Mercedes SLC. With a rival Audi TT, you'd be limited to 60,000 miles in this period. And you can extend that warranty a year at a time for extra cash, provided that you've kept up with servicing and inspection requirements. Though if you do, a 100,000 mile cap comes into play. So, what's been delivered here? A Porsche Boxster beater? Not really. That might be what the magazines wanted, but I'm not sure that likely owners are that bothered by such a comparison. This isn't the uncompromised driver's machine that its Porsche rival can be, but it gets close enough to that benchmark for many likely owners to start prioritizing the lower pricing, nicer cabin, and stronger standards of safety that you get with this Munich model. The Z4 is a quieter, more complete cruiser than a 718 Boxster 2, and it's probably a better all-round choice than its more natural rival, the Audi TT Roadster. Like that Ingolstadt model, this BMW disappoints a little when it comes to steering feel, but it's accurate and agile through the bends in a way the previous model never was. BMW has been building roadsters for over 80 years and it shows with this third generation design, a car that's matured extremely well, slowly and methodically developing into an all-rounder that's tough to beat. It's annoying though that you have to spend so much more to get the adaptive M suspension we think this car really needs for the completion of its ride and handling package. What it all means is that though the Z4 might not be the first car you look at when choosing a sports roadster, look at it you must. It's now just too good not to.